Aite. Welcome, members, to the 34th meeting in 2014 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. And as always, ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is a declaration of interests, and I welcome John Mason to the committee and invite him in accordance with section three of the Code of Conduct to declare any relevant interest, please, John. Well, I'm very happy to join the committee, and I do not think there's anything particular I need to mention at this stage. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure members would want to join with me in, in uh, noting Mike McKenzie's elevation to higher things, um, whichever committee he's gone to. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Um, I'm sure that we have enjoyed our time with Mike on this committee. He certainly made a contribution, and I have to recognise his uh, very interesting contribution to the debate last week on the uh, legal writings bill, which I think it would be fair to say we all enjoyed. Um, agenda item two is a decision on taking business in private. Uh, and we're proposing to take items 9 and 10 in private. Item 9 is consideration of a draft report on the Serious Crime Bill, which is UK Parliament legislation. And item 10 is consideration of a draft report on the Prisoners' Control of Release Scotland Bill. Does the committee agree to take items 9 and 10 in private, please? I agree. Thank you. Agenda item three is instrument subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the public services reform, inspection and monitoring of prisons, Scotland Order 2014 draft. The committee may wish to note, however, that this is an amended version of the draft order laid to address concern raised by the committee's legal advisers. Is the committee content with this instrument? Thank you. Agenda item four, instruments subject to negative procedure. The marriage between persons of different sexes, prescribed bodies, Scotland regulations 2014, SSI 2014-304. Regulation two states that the bodies prescribed for the purposes of 81A2 of the Marriage Scotland Act 1979 are listed in the schedule, which omits section. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the regulations to the attention of the Parliament on the general reporting ground as they contain a minor drafting error? Does the committee agree to note, however, that the minor error will be corrected when the regulations are next amended for another reason? Thank you. The Food Information Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 312. It's been suggested that the meaning of this instrument could be clearer. Firstly, the formal meaning of Regulation 5.5 could be clearer. It does not clearly give effect to the policy intention that the provisions of the regulation to apply where the relevant ingredient or processing aid is itself a substance or product listed in Annex 2 of EU Regulation 1169-2011 on the provision of food information to consumers. And secondly, the formal meaning of paragraph 2A3 of Schedule 5 to the instrument could be clearer. That paragraph substitutes the text B, an indication of its maximum alcoholic strength in required form 1, 2 or 3, in column two of the entry relating to the description low alcohol in part one to schedule eight to the food labeling regulations 1996. The text which should be substituted is B, the drink is marked or labeled with an indication of its maximum alcoholic strength is required form, sorry, in required form one, two or three. Accordingly, paragraph 2A3 of schedule five does not clearly give effect to the policy intention. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention on reporting ground H as its meaning could be clearer? Yes. Could I make some Please do. Um, there's a wider issue, I think, in, in terms of clarity. Um, while I think uh, in other respects it's likely that this uh, uh, instrument is legally clear, I think like many of these complicated amendments, it's likely to be practically unclear. And I specifically look at Schedule 5, which starts on page 22 and continues to page 29. It amends, I haven't actually counted them, but I think it's probably, yeah, it must be over a dozen other pieces of secondary legislation. Um, the secondary legislation that it's amending will, I'm sure, uh, include secondary legislation, uh, which has been amended many times. Um, there is a genuine practical difficulty in establishing the current state of, let's just choose one at random, the food lot marking regulations 1996, now some nearly 20 years old. It's been amended many times. Uh, and of course, secondary legislation, unlike primary legislation, uh, when it's published on the legislation.gov.uk website, is not thereafter updated as amendments are put through. So there is nowhere the member of public uh, or even someone in the industry can go and see what the current regulations look like. 
And I would like to perhaps suggest that the government considers one of a range of options. First of all, uh, perhaps consolidation of much amended secondary legislation, so it's published in total, so that one starts afresh with something that has the whole regulation. That would be one option. Um, that they consider whether um, the process by which primary legislation is updated uh, as amendments are made on legislation.gov.uk should apply to secondary legislation, or perhaps alternatively, at least in the legislation.gov.uk, there was a list of the instruments that amend the instruments, even if there's no consolidated uh, list. Because if you were to try and find out uh, all the amendment that's been made to, and I just picked one piece of legislation at random, uh, you would be looking through 20 years' worth of legislation to try and find the amendments. Mm -hmm. And the odds are you'd miss one. Um, and I just, I just think it's an unsatisfactory way in which uh, uh, to deal with what are quite complex pieces of secondary yeah. legislation. Yeah, thank you. John. Um, I just back uh, Stuart up in what he said. And uh, I've been highlighted to me um, by people from the food industry that there are concerns that because of the <coughs> obscure nature of this, um, many people in the industry will actually not be very aware of what's going on here at all. Um, I'm not certain who, uh, in whose gift it lies to publicise this better, but I think these are possibly quite far-reaching mm. amendments, and yet m many of the industry bodies are not entirely aware of them. Thank you for those comments, and I take it the rest of the committee will be in agreement with them. Yeah, thank you. Okay, this instrument also contains some minor drafting errors. Firstly, Regulation 2.3 provides that a reference to certain EU provisions in a regulation listed in paragraph 4 is a reference to that EU provision as amended from time to time. It should instead provide that a reference to an EU provisions in a provision in the regulations listed in paragraph 4 is a reference to that EU provision as amended from time to time. Secondly, in part one of schedule three to the instrument in the entry relating to quotes article 18 one list of ingredients close quotes the reference in column two to quotes regulation open bracket eight close bracket close quotes should be to quotes regulation eight close quote brackets with no brackets close brackets thirdly Part one of the schedule to the instrument purports to revoke certain provisions of the miscellaneous food additives amendment regulations 1999. Those regulations were, however, revoked in full in 2013 insofar as they extend to Scotland, and accordingly the purported revocation is of no effect. And finally, paragraph 15b of the schedule five to the instrument inserts a definition of regulation 1169-2011 in the natural mineral water, spring water and bottled drinking water, Scotland number two regulations 2007. This definition is, however, unnecessary as regulation 1169-2011 is not referred to in these regulations. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention under the general reporting ground as it contains minor drafting errors? Does the committee agree to note, however, that the Scottish Government has undertaken to amend all but the errors in Regulation 2.3 at the first appropriate opportunity? And given that Scottish Government accepts that including references to the schedules of the instruments as well as to the regulations would have made the intention of Regulation 2.3 of the instrument clearer, does the committee agree to suggest the Scottish Government may wish to take the same opportunity to amend the remaining error? Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014 Ancillary Provision Number 2, Order 2014, SSI 2014-315, nor the Smoke Control Areas Exempted Fireplaces Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014-316, nor the Smoke Control Areas Authorised Fuels Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014-317 nor on the Education, Disapplication of Section 53B, Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014-318, nor on the Environmental Regulation Relevant Offences, Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014-319, nor on the Controlled Waste Fixed Penalty Notices, Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014-320, nor the Litter Fixed Penalty Notices, Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014-321,
nor on the environmental regulation liability where activity carried out by arrangement with another, Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014-323, nor on the environmental regulation significant environmental harm, Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014-324, nor on the Common Agricultural Policy Cross Compliance Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 at 325, and nor lastly on the Public Bodies Joint Working Content of Performance Reports Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014 at 326. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes. Right, thank you. Agenda item five, instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014, commencement number four, order 2014, uh, SSI 2014-314. Is the committee content with that instrument, please? Agenda item six, Welfare Fund Scotland Bill. This item of business is consideration of the Scottish Government's response to the Committee Stage 1 report on the Welfare Fund Scotland Bill. Members have seen the briefing paper and the response from the Scottish Government. Do members have any comments, please? Content. Are we therefore content to note the response and, if necessary, reconsider the bill after stage 2? Thank you. Agenda item 7 is the Food Scotland Bill, and this item is consideration of the delegated powers provisions in this bill after stage 2. Members will have noted the Scottish Government has provided a supplementary delegated powers memorandum and will have seen the briefing paper. Stage 3 consideration of the bill is due to take place on Tuesday, the 9th of December, that is next week. The committee should therefore agree its conclusions today. The committee may note that the power in section 48.3 as amended prevents the amendment of sections 37 and 44 in a way that removes the discharge of criminal liability provided for by these sections, but only in circumstances where an individual has been served with both a compliance notice and a fixed penalty notice and has complied with both. The committee may consider the power as amended leaves open the possibility that the power in section 48.3 could still be used to remove the discharge of criminal liability in sections 37 or 44 in circumstances where a person has been issued with only one administrative sanction. The committee may wish to call on the Scottish Government to consider a further amendment to the Bill at Stage 3 so as to remove that liability. Does the committee agree to accordingly draw the provision of Section 48.3 as amended at Stage 2 to the attention of Parliament? We do. Does the committee agree to report it as content with the other provisions in the bill that have been amended at stage two to insert or substantially alter provisions conferring powers to make subordinate legislation and other delegated powers? Thank you. Which brings us to agenda item eight, which is the Modern Slavery Bill, which of course is UK Parliament legislation. Under this item, the committee is invited to consider the powers to make subordinate legislation conferred on the Scottish ministers in this bill. Briefing paper has been provided. It sets out the relevant aspects of the bill and comments on their effect. Does the committee agree to report to the League Committee that it is content with the delegated powers conferred on the Scottish Ministers in the bill and with the procedure to which they are subject? Agreed. Thank you. Which completes item 8. And I move this meeting into private, please. I 